This is a screencast for the Canada reading for Lesson 14.2, um, or 14.3, I'm sorry. Guys, um, what I need you to remember here is you're not reading this big thing all in one day. That's not fair to you, so don't get intimidated by this. One thing I want you to remember is that you're only supposed to read up to the people today, so that's all I'm going to read to you. So as you can see, we have a little map of Canada here to kind of acquaint us with what the nation looks like and a little bit on background with land and climate and history. Land and climate. Canada is the second largest country in the world after Russia. Due to its vast area of 3,855,103 square miles, or 9,984,670 square kilometers, Canada features a variety of climates and terrains. British Columbia has a wet climate on the Pacific coastline, near desert conditions in the interior, and cooler temperatures in the high elevations of the Rocky Mountains and related ranges. Further inland, the provinces of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba are dominated by southern prairies and northern forests and tundra. Much of northern Canada, including parts of the Yukon, Nunavut, a new territory created in 1999, and Northwest Territories is uninhabited because of the Arctic climate and permanently frozen ground. The Great Lakes moderate the climate of southern Ontario, whose where summers are hot and humid, but winters bring snow and freezing temperatures. East of Ontario is Quebec, Canada's largest province. It is more than 1,000 miles, or 1,600 kilometers, east to west and north to south. The Canadian Shield, a huge U-shaped rocky expanse surrounding the Hudson Bay, covers most of Quebec and includes thousands of miles of coniferous forest. Much of the province's timber, mining, and hydroelectric wealth is found here. Although the Appalachian Mountains extend into northern New Brunswick, most of the Atlantic province's interior terrain is fairly low and flat. This landscape gives way to plateaus, valleys, and rocky terrain along the coast. History. Many early people included the Inuit, Innu, Beothuk, Mi'kmaq and Malasite troops, or groups. The first Europeans were likely Vikings from Greenland who settled briefly in Newfoundland around AD 1000. English, French, and Basque fishermen came to Canada's Atlantic coast in the 1500s. French colonists arrived in the 1600s, settling along the St. Lawrence River in a territory they called New France. Throughout the 1600s, Britain fought with France for the territory. In 1763, the Treaty of Paris gave Britain control over New France, which was renamed Quebec. At about the same time, British loyalists, who had left the 13 colonies after the American Revolution, also began settling in the area. In 1791, Quebec was divided into Upper and Lower Canada. The two areas became the provinces of Quebec and Ontario in 1867. That same year, Quebec and Ontario joined with New Brunswick and Nova Scotia to establish a confederation called the Dominion of Canada. In the 1870s, Canada purchased the vast area around the Hudson Bay, called Rupert's Land, from the Hudson's Bay Company, a British trading company. This land became a part of Canada and was divided into the provinces of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and the Northern Territories, now known as the Yukon, the Northwest Territories, and Nunavut. Prince Edward Island joined the nation in 1873, but Newfoundland remained a separate colony until 1949. Canada has retained both formal and informal ties with Britain since becoming a confederation. Although Queen Elizabeth II is the official head of state, Britain has had no control over Canada, and since constitutional changes made in 1982, a Charter of Rights and Freedoms was also established in 1982, guaranteeing fundamental human rights to all Canadians. Each region in Canada has a unique history and each has faced its own challenges in recent years. Along the Atlantic coast, fishing resources are dwindling and unemployment is high. Some people from that area feel the federal government should do more to stimulate their economy. In the West, self-government for many indigenous peoples in the region has been an important political topic. Some Western provinces also have traditionally been at odds with the more liberal political establishment centered in Ontario and Quebec. 
Meanwhile, Quebec has dealt with a movement towards secession or receiving special status among provinces. The most recent attempt at independence came in 1995, but was rejected by a slim margin of voters. Since 2006, Quebec has been considered a nation within Canada by the Canadian government, though such status means little practically. In 2006, the Conservative Party came to power after 12 years of Liberal rule. So, now that we've finished the reading, go back to your assignment, and you're working on a crossword puzzle today. So, this is an assignment that you're going to need to um, print out, unfortunately. But, use the clues, use the reading to help you out, and make sure that you submit it in the digital Dropbox. If you need anything, let me know.